This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. Same thing Ronnie Coleman did here for the Black Lawyers Association. She got some, they got some new members and she sent out notices to them. This has been a few years ago. So they called an illegal election. Mm. And she got elected at it. They sent the notice down to commercial appeals. She had been elected as the Black Lawyers' new president. So it was like half the body was saying, you got to take a retraction. The other one was saying no embarrassing. It's too embarrassing. So it got left to that. So she got that little on her resume for being chair of the Black Lawyers Association, Ben F. Jones chapter. Mm -hmm. And actually, she tried to do everything she could to destroy it. Hmm. Wow. We raised money for some scholarships and for financial law school. So she came in, and the late H.T. Lockett, the Honorable, and the late Otis Higgs jumped her about it. She was trying to get us to turn our controlled scholarship over to Memphis State Law School. And Memphis State Law School said they needed the money because there weren't any qualified students in the state of Tennessee. So they wanted to bring some in from outside. How insulting is that? That's very insulting, yeah. So H.T. Lockett told her she could kiss his ass in a meeting, literally. <laughs> he said he wouldn't say this to a lady, but you don't count. So he said, you Wow. <laughs> oh, man. That's By it. the way, uh, Senator Jim Sasser was a little bit full of that Jack Daniels up at the Crescent Club one time. And I'm talking to him. And he was explaining one of his big mistakes which was he worked out a deal with the Republicans, the Republican county chairman, and Kenneth Turner, judge of juvenile court, who shouldn't have even been involved because there's a judicial prohibition mm -hmm. against judges being involved directly in politics. They mm -hmm. came to him and said if he nominated Ronnie Coleman for U.S. attorney, then they would make sure that it was Bill Frist instead of Thompson, who ran against him for senator. He said he lost anyway, but he did turn in. Well, he turned in Ronnie Coleman, the U.S. attorney, and she wasn't anything but a Republican who stood in the way of justice for everybody around here. So mm. we get these folk that sneak in, and they've given her a fantastic uh, amount of money to go interview, to review these uh, rape crises. 20 some thousand that haven't been tested. So, okay, which one should go to this New York firm that's getting seven to eight million dollars to take six to seven years to go through them when TBI is offering to come in and do them immediately for free? Wow, that's crazy. That's Memphis for you. Wired with her crooked self down at the DA's office. And I'm wondering what's going to happen when Janice Fully Love gets down here to be clerk of juvenile court. Mm -hmm. She needs to watch out because they're putting a the bullseye on her backside. Um, she may have some health challenges recently, right? She has some health challenges. Yeah, but they've got a $25 million illegal account down there that they've been sitting on hiding. It's been used to finance the operations of the Tea Party. Wow. So they want to get somebody, and somebody should actually be in the federal penitentiary behind that. Young Mr. Stanton should have been jumping some behind off of it, but he didn't because he got bamboozled into thinking they were going to push him for federal judge. They double-crossed him. And, of course, right. Obama was in office, so for all those years, he never moved him uh, into consideration. Maybe if he was, like, openly gay, he might have got... <laughs> I don't know, I'm just joking. I'm all joking. those folks he had how can you, Joe? You breaking up? What do you say, Judge? What are you saying? All those folks that Obama had in his administration 
that were not so quietly gay. Mm -hmm. Most of the black ones anyway. Well, well, Judge, I want to thank you once again for sharing so much of your time, your wisdom, your insight on some of the issues, as well as being a living history. You need to write your book and get that movie deal done as soon as possible. No, I don't want a movie deal. It's corrupted. <laughs> oh, I'm there. You need to write the book then, a memoir or something. And if I can't do that, I'm talking enough these days. So I'm just spreading around a little bit of oral history. Now, I know a lot of people really appreciate it. They want this insight and they want it from somebody they can trust because people are definitely looking for sources. They get a trust with information uh, that they can use to improve and empower themselves with. So, Judge, thank oh, you. Well, one thing I got to say before I go. Okay. You know, I do tweet on Twitter at Judge Joe Brown TV. Yes. But I get some pushback from some brothers that get upset with me because I also push public peace, dignity, and order in our community. It's like, brother, we understand you're taking penitentiary chances and you want to go to jail. We understand you got your hoe that you got out there that you pimping. We understand you moving merchandise, a.k.a. drugs. But, you know, don't get offended when some other black men who are trying to do the right thing get to talking about we need order in our community. Why we got to go to jail, all the righteous political prisoners in the penitentiary? There are a few. But we ain't in the penitentiary for the most part playing Robin Hood. Granted, the sentences we get for the drugs we sell are perhaps stiffer than the white folks get, but we don't need to be selling poison to our people. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And then this other thing you get, it's funny with the women that just object to manhood. Now, I sent you something, mm -hmm. and it's a white woman that did that, but take a look at it. It's that thing about the importance of manhood, mm -hmm. you might enjoy that. I'm definitely going to check it out. I'll share it with my networks as well as that picture. It's not long, but it's right hard hitting into the exact point. She says everything I've been saying. And she's a pretty woman, too. So it's sort of like she says, don't any real woman want any weak man. So you got eye candy and food for thought all in one place. I'm definitely going to check it out. Yo, any, any real woman <laughs> want a weak man. Men are supposed to be in charge. And she has a thing that I've been saying a different way. She said weak men and women get uh, abused and used by wicked men. It takes strong men to protect them from that. Oh, that's deep, and that's true. And uh, it's time for men to be men again. Let's be men again. <laughs> Let's stand up. Yeah. They need, they need to show that little short five-minute clip to every high school out there. Mm -hmm. And the white folk won't object because it's a white woman that's attractive saying it. Yeah, that's the power. And I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out, Judge. You got me. Very much interested in looking at that. And also, before I go, I want to get your thoughts about, we talked about celebrities being our leaders and whatnot. Well, for black folk, we look at, why are we, are we looking at celebrities as being leaders? LeBron James opening up that I Promise school. What's your thoughts about that? It's one school. Okay. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Good tax write-off. That's nice. <laughs> the slot is expressive. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But you know what would be impressive? What? If he went and went back tried to go to college. Uh, might be next on his list. He might go to UCLA. <laughs> he can't get to UCLA. I can't get to UCLA. See, like, I know Magic. I've known Magic and his family 35 years. Mm -hmm. I went to school with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. We were classmates. Mm -hmm. And by the way, on that greatest forever, the mm -hmm. one at the top of the list ain't LeBron, it ain't Kobe, and it ain't... Uh, Michael Jordan and it ain't magic. There's only one up there. That's Kareem. They treat Kareem like Hank Aaron. They're not like he don't exist. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, Kareem scored more points in his career and per year in the uh, NBA than any other player in their history. He was a phenomenal talent, no doubt about it. Yeah. Probably the greatest college player of all time, too. 
And he also will tell you he was a student. When we Kareem always had a slide rule clip to his belt. He had mm. a B plus average in engineer at mm. UCLA and played basketball. Mm. And he will he right now the reason you don't hear about it, he's a scholar. He writes and researches books. Mm -hmm. Magic Johnson was famous for telling kids, I went to college so I could become a businessman. Mm -hmm. Basketball to afford to go to college so I could be a businessman. I played pro basketball to get the money to set the business up. Mm -hmm. He set himself up very well. So Michael Jordan says it's all about the mind, the head, the leadership, and teamwork. See, Kobe don't know anything about that. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> yeah. about LeBron. Seems a little bit better than Kobe, but if LeBron wanted to impress me, go enroll in one of these college programs just so you can set an example for these young kids that look up to you. That black boys need to get their heads together so they can become black men. See, if you don't have what it takes get around in your jungle in your head you ain't got it mm. oh thank you, you know. just for that all right now be just, strong power to the people keep awake stay straight stay focused and improve your mind and it'll be okay one of these times Thank you, Judge Joe Brown, for that. And you can find them, boys and girls, scholars and laymen, at Judge Joe Brown TV on Twitter. And trust me, you follow him. He'll re reply back to you if you got a question for the judge. Holler at the judge on Twitter. So thank you so much. And the words of the great Duke Elton Judge, we love you madly. Keep on producing and pushing. All right, young brother. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thanks.